Welcome back friends, welcome back to our homestead. In the previous video we discussed the key concepts for creating an excellent passive solar greenhouse. In this video we'll delve into the specific components needed to construct an effective one. Using a 3D model of our garden I'll show you some of these elements and reveal my design for a new passive solar greenhouse. Be sure to watch until the end. So I think there are eight areas we really need to consider and I think a couple of these are often overlooked. So I'll list them first and then we'll unpack them in a bit more detail. So firstly is position and then glazing, materials, insulation, mass, ventilation, soil beds and lastly is control. Okay so number one position. The positioning of any passive solar greenhouse is divided into two considerations. The first is the physical location. Where will you place your greenhouse? Will it be adjacent to your house or in a standalone location? The key requirement is that the greenhouse faces the sun as the sun moves across the sky. As without sunlight, there can be no passive solar energy. If you choose a standalone location, like us, then you will need to consider the availability of services such as electricity and water. We have a specific location in mind that already has a water supply and we plan to use solar power for electricity. The second part is the rotational placement or orientation. We already know from my previous video, Greenhouses Are Broken, that the passive solar principle works by facing south, but how precisely south does it need to be? Well, as it turns out, not that precise. In fact, the best advice is precise south probably isn't the best idea because the coldest part of the day is the morning and so you maybe want to take more advantage of that early sun when the temperatures inside the greenhouse are coolest and try to cut out some of that later day sun when you're trying to cool the greenhouse down. Now we need to lift the lid on the proposed design so that I can work through the other elements. Bear in mind, it's still a work in progress at this point, although it's mostly ready to roll. Okay, glazing. When it comes to greenhouse glazing, there are several options to choose from. But the two main options are glass or polycarbonate. Polythene is also an option, but since we are trying to retain heat, it will not be considered. Double skin polythene glazing is a possibility, but it can be complex. For me, the choice is clear, excuse the pun, it's polycarbonate. It may not be the cheapest option, but its benefits outweigh this one drawback. Firstly, polycarbonate is significantly lighter and easier to handle than glass. Additionally, it is much more difficult to break. Many people opt for double-skinned polycarbonate, which has a small air gap that provides better insulation, which is essential. A lesser known property of polycarbonate is its ability to diffuse light. This means that no matter what direction the light hits the glazing, it will be diffused into the greenhouse, making the angle of the glazing less important. However, we still need to consider snow shedding, but it may not be a concern for you. Okay, construction. Construction materials are mainly a budget consideration rather than a factor that affects the required outcomes. For example, the framing of this greenhouse will not have a significant impact on its working effectiveness. We have the advantage of a ready supply of pine and spruce, and other woods, so our main posts will be made from these. Just debarked tree trunks, which will then preserve using the Japanese method of shell sugiban, and drop them into the holes to form the main upright supports. For the roofing, we have some leftover fibre cement tiles from our main house roofing project, so it makes sense to use those and then buy more if needed. Otherwise, I would probably go for a metal roof. The solid sides and back I will make from moisture-proofed OSB, which I'll then paint to fully waterproof them. Maybe Gita will want to do something arty on there. It makes a perfect blank canvas. Next is insulation. Insulation is necessary for the walls, roof and possibly a bit into the grounds to keep out the frost. Since this is not intended to be a four season passive solar greenhouse, there is no need to insulate deep into the ground to prevent deep winter frost. There are several options for insulation, 
but not all of them are suitable for this type of project, so I will only mention the viable and available options. One option is blanket roll insulation, made from materials such as fiberglass or mineral wool. This is viable, but it can be cumbersome, so I will discard it for now. However, these materials are available as block panels, which are easier to work with. Another option is foam board or rigid foam panels, which are made from three different types of materials, extruded or expanded polystyrene, polyurethane, and polyisocyrenate. I hope I've pronounced that right. They each have different properties and costs. Additionally, there is a natural fibers option, such as hemp, wool, or straw, that are recycled to form insulation, either sold as rolls or panels. Insulation is a complex topic that could be covered in more detail in a separate video. The fifth consideration is the mass, also known as the heat sink or thermal battery. This is responsible for absorbing heat during the day and releasing it at night to keep the greenhouse from freezing. The most efficient material for this is water as it has a high heat storage capacity and it's usually stored in barrels. However, due to the low temperatures here, it's about minus 15 at the moment, water is not an option as it will split the barrels when it freezes. Therefore, solid materials must be used instead, of which there is an abundance around us. There are several ruins on our property, such as old barns or outhouses that are unlikely to be rebuilt and the stone can be used to build a large mass. The physics of this subject could be covered in more detail in a separate video. In addition, I am considering building a mini rocket stove or something into the mass, which we can then light if we need to input more heat into the greenhouse. The sixth consideration in building a passive solar greenhouse is ventilation. In order to cool the greenhouse during hot summers, it's important to have proper ventilation. I plan to include windows on the lower front side for natural airflow and also install one or two fans on the east side to exhaust hot air out of the greenhouse. These fans will be controlled by a thermostat and powered by solar energy, making the most efficient use of energy during the hottest days when it's most needed. Additionally, I may consider incorporating geothermal cooling at a later date, but for now I want to focus on those two basic methods of ventilation. The seventh consideration is the soil and growing beds for the vegetables. Good soil is essential for the success of this project and the native soil on our property is pretty sandy. To improve fertility various substrates will be added to the native soil. A layer of biochar will be dug in about 50 centimeters deep followed by a layer of high quality compost possibly from the first batch of chicken compost or sourced from a nearby mountain of cow manure. Then to plant into, a large amount of good quality compost will be mixed with the native soil and amended with slow release organic fertilizers such as fish meal. Additionally, a biologically active six month fermented nettle juice will also be applied to give the soil a strong foundation for the soil life to thrive in the future. Control. I've already started making videos to demonstrate how to control and automate elements of the greenhouse. First, let's talk about automated ventilation. A passive solar greenhouse relies on natural ventilation to regulate temperature and humidity, but with automated ventilation you can fine tune the airflow for optimal growing conditions. With automated watering, you can ensure that your plants always have the right amount of water. I'll use sensors to monitor soil moisture levels and activate a watering system when needed. You can also set up a drip irrigation system to conserve water and prevent overwatering. By automating these key aspects of greenhouse management, you can reduce your workload and improve the health and productivity of your plants. So, there's a bit more in-depth overview of what I think are the most important considerations when building a passive solar greenhouse. I hope you found the video of interest and maybe even helpful. If you did, then there's lots of other videos on our channel which also you might find interesting and helpful. If at any point you like this video, do give us a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on another video soon. Bye for now.